أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا حبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم في عز وجل سيس عند القرآن the brothers and sisters that Allah surely will not change the fate of those people or do not change what is within them first Allah will not change the condition of the people unless they change what is within them first today I wish to talk about something slightly controversial and some of you must be thinking well that's nothing new but it's a bit more than that. For those of you who are Bangladeshis, you'll be more sensitive to what I'm going to say today. And for those of you who are not Bangladeshis in your ethnic origin, inshallah, you listen and you will take from the good that I say and ask Allah to forgive me for anything bad that I say. I've just come back from Bangladesh actually a week ago, last Friday I came. I left the country two days earlier than I was supposed to leave because of the political condition that I saw unfolding right in front of me. Your brothers and sisters, Bangladesh at the moment is on the verge of civil war and that is self-inflicted not imposed from anybody else. And that is a tragedy that years down the line, the Bangladeshi Muslims will wake up to realize. Second to the third most populous Muslim country in the world. 160 million people live in a small country. Very fertile. You can, you can plant any seed of any nature and the plant would grow and the fruit would come. Any fruit you want, any vegetable you want, you can plant and it will grow. It's a delta region. All the fertile soil from the Himalayas, India and all other parts travel across the continent and land in Bangladesh. It used to be known historically as the Medina for the Muslims who would flee persecution from surrounding oppressive dictatorial regimes, Hindus, Buddhist, or any other denomination. Today, Muslims, Muslims are being persecuted in Bangladesh by Muslims, unfortunately. I don't take political sides in the Bangladeshi squabble. I'm not interested even though my parents come from that country, I take no interest in Bangladesh as a country. I take an interest in any Muslim country, any Muslim nation, anywhere in the world, any causes of justice and injustice I take. Not only do I take interest, I take active interest in pursuing a fair and just way out of that particular misery. What I see in Bangladesh happening is the Turkification of Bangladesh. What Kamal Pasha, whatever Mustafa Kamal his name is, did to Turkey is what Bangladeshi government and the secular fundamentalists in Bangladesh are trying to do. Obliterate Islam and its culture and its heritage from every institution, public or private, from Bangladesh. A premeditated move made by secular fundamentalists and they now occupy positions of power in every corner of Bangladesh. It is a tragedy 
that you don't hear about, not especially from the media that we listen to. What's going on in Bangladesh, you may be wondering. Many years ago, in 1971, Pakistan attacked Bangladesh brutally. Pakistan is in this room. Forgive me for using such powerful terms. They slaughtered millions, raped, and caused pillage. I'm talking about the military in 1971. Pakistan and Bangladesh were together. They were separated from India and they were created as Pakistan, Pakistan, a pure place, a place where faith and purity will proliferate, a place where people will find sanctuary, a place where Islam would flourish, a place where the world would see a beacon and example of what Islam could be if a Muslim nation was to be born out of the ashes of the civil war that we saw engulfing India. Pakistan, unfortunately, oppressed Bangladesh in a miserable way. Bangladeshis decided that they need independence. An independence war pursued, ensued, and what happened after that was bloodbath in Bangladesh. Orchestrated by our fellow Muslim brothers from Pakistan. <coughs> that history Bangladeshis have never forgotten. <coughs> They've never forgotten. The whole nationalistic fervor of Bangladesh was built and based around Pakistan and those who collaborated with Pakistani army in order to cause the death and destructions of millions of people. Brothers and sisters, 1971 went. 41 years later, current government has chosen to arrest arbitrarily, at whim, any individual they think without evidence, without a due process, who may be politically as an opponent to the current government, accuse them of war criminals or war crimes and lock them up, including prominent scholars in Bangladesh. Prominent scholars. Unfortunately, Bangladeshi masses are as confused as you can imagine. 160 million. 90% of them probably don't know much about Islam. A tragedy. So they don't know what about, much about Islam and they don't know much about secularism. What unites them is their nationalistic fervor of wanting to be Bengali. Again, an un-Islamic concept to be so nationalistic. But if these people were knowledgeable, they would not be behaving in this way. Two days after I left, in Dhaka city, the capital city. Millions of people have gathered apparently, all wanting and calling for hanging of the four people or five people who have been put behind bars and their trials are undergoing right now. They're going through the trial right now. One or two of them have already received their verdict. As young as six-year-old kids, as old as 60, 70-year-old people apparently are coming out into the street saying, we want to see those people hanged. What kind of civilization is this? The people are so bloodthirsty that they want to see people hanged without due process, without solid evidence against these people. 41 years have gone. In Bangladesh, when I was there, somebody beat up a gentleman wearing beard. Two occasions it happened in two places. After the security services beat the life out of these two people, they discovered that these two people who were beating or most lifeless were actually Hindus. Had nothing to do with Islam. And they were beating them because they had a beard. And if you have a beard in Bangladesh, you're associated with Jamaat Islami, the political party which apparently represents Islam. And if you are a representative of that party, you are guilty of 1971 crime. Whether you were born in 1982, it doesn't matter. You are, and you should be shot dead if you're seen on the street anytime said the police, commi police commissioner of Dhaka city. He said this openly. If I see a member of Jamaat Islami or Shibir on the street, I'll shoot them dead. Talk about due process. I don't support any political party when it comes to these issues. This is what Mustafa Kemal did in Turkey in order to obliterate Islam from the facets of people. This is what successive dictators in Egypt, of Egypt has done, have done. 
This is what the Middle Eastern dictators have done for years in Tunisia and they continue doing in Syria and other parts of the world. The difference is, the difference is, the secularists in Bangladesh don't know anything about Islam. Secularists in the Middle East know something about Islam. I was present in a conference where the infamous writer Taslim Nasreen, as you probably know from Bangladesh, was the keynote speaker and the speech was in the conference was in Tunisia. And they invited a secular fundamentalist writer from the Arab world also to be a keynote speaker. He doesn't like Muslims very much. He doesn't like Islamic parties. He has strong fervor against Islam. He is secular Muslims and he is a, a critique of Islam 24 hours a day. When Taslim Nasreen spoke, in the middle of a speech, this Arab gentleman stood up and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I can't take this anymore. This lady is a kafir. <laughs> the difference is, Taslim Nasreen does not know anything about Islam. Zero. But she wants to be the critique of Islam. The Arab secularist, he knows a little bit about Islam. And when somebody goes over that particular red line that he holds close to his heart, he would protest. And that's the tragedy of Bangladesh. Majority of Bangladeshis don't know much about Islam. They don't know much about Islam because they've been deprived of the opportunity of learning about Islam. Bangladesh will see one of the two, one of the two happening in the next few weeks and months. A civil war that will engulf the country, killing, destruction, death, unnecessary. Or international communities, Muslim communities would put enough pressure to put sense in the heads of this government. A tragedy that can be averted easily. You cannot silence Islam by behaving in this way. You cannot silence Islam forever. Never. You can never silence Islam. Jamaat Islami may have taken a bad political move in 1971, which they did. They opposed independence. Terrible move as far as I'm concerned. But people like People who were born in 1982, 83, 84, they were not even alive in 71 to be indicted and put behind bars because of political charges. Wallahi, Bangladesh is on the brink of destruction at the moment. That's why I began my khutbah today by saying I'm going to talk controversially for Bangladeshis. This may be too much to take. Allah says in the Quran, Allah will not change the condition of those people who do not change what is within them. One of the bloggers who's organizing the current uprising or current rally in the capital city, supported by the government. One of the bloggers, actually those bloggers who have been responsible through Facebook in bringing people together, wrote in his own blog that I've read with my own eyes. If Allah comes down, we will want to hang Allah too. You want to know the true faces of those people who are currently organizing the so-called revolution in Bangladesh? They are not only an atheist in their nature, but they are secular fundamentalists in every way possible. They hate Islam, and if they could have it their way, they will destroy every facet of Islam from Bangladesh. Bangladesh is wake up. Muslims wake up. You cannot allow this barbarity to continue in Bangladesh, all in the name of 1971. Yes, a crime was committed, but these people are not the criminals. Politically, charged, trumped up charges will not stand. You may hang them today, but from their ashes, from their blood and from their hanging, millions will rise to defend their honor tomorrow. Those people who are leading the so-called revolution in Bangladesh today, they're characterless, godless, moralless, ethicless, worse than animals in my view in the way they talk and they in the way they behave. You just have to go and read what they write on a regular basis. They're the leading lights of the current revolution. I'm not asking you to support a political party. I'm asking you to support Islam. You read Allah They wish to obliterate the light of Allah by blowing onto it. They wish to blow onto the light of Allah and obliterate it. They can't. They will never be able to. We can have a dialogue with the secular people in this country, no problem. We can have a discussion with the secular communities around Europe, no problem. But with Bangladeshi secularists, I'm sorry, they're nothing but fundamentalists in every nature. 
extremist in every nature, there is no discussion with such a people. They don't understand the discussion, they don't understand dialogue. So here is what I'm suggesting we do as a community. We do not allow Bangladesh to slip into its dark days. We don't allow Bangladesh to go down and become engulfed in a civil war. You can do something about it. You can take an exit step. Go on to Google tonight and find out all the relevant people that you need to write to. The embassy, the ambassador, Bangladesh's various government. Put pressure! If three million Muslims from Britain were to write to Bangladeshi government today and tomorrow and over the next few weeks and few months, hopefully they will heed. Especially Muslims of different nationality and background. You know what they said to me when I spoke against it? Ah, you must be a member of Jamaat Islami too. Really? And somebody else said, I must be a collaborator of 1971. And I laughed. I said I was born in 1971, 19th of October. If you think I was collaborating with the Pakistani army in my nappies, well, good luck in your thinking. Such have become the twisted minds of those people who are infected by this nationalistic father that is sweeping Bangladesh. Nationalism has no space in Islam. I want you to mark this. Nationalism has no room or an inch of space in Islam whatsoever. Nationalism is haram. Full stop. We are what? Muslims. No matter where we come from. Arab, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Indian, African. We are the citizens of the world. The creations of Allah. We are together as one ummah. There is no nationalism in our vocabulary and in our culture. The Arabs have failed for years when they were trying to unite behind Nasser with the Arab nationalism. Bangladesh is proving that they can't. Turkey has failed miserably in keeping its country afloat when nationalistic father was dominating the country. I said to the Turks when I was there that without Islam, you're like fish out of water. You embrace Islam, you will lead the world. And they are currently, economically and politically, providing a leadership to the world that no other Muslim nation can because they're coming back to Islam. The same applies to Bangladesh. Same applies to Pakistan. Same applies to every nation across the globe. You are a Muslim, come back to Islam. For without Islam, you are a fish out of water. I know you think I'm angry. I am very upset. Deeply traumatized for what I see today. But this is not the destiny of Bangladeshis. For certainly they haven't chosen it. It's been imposed on them by the secular fundamentalists. And something has to be done to stop it. Brothers and sisters, unite together, understand the message of Islam truly, the universal message of Islam based on knowledge, conviction, certainty, and our deep relationship with Allah, based on spirituality, fairness, and justice. Nothing else. Every country needs it. And most populous country in the world, second most populous Muslim nation in the world, needs it more than any other nation. So don't stay silent. Do something about it. For if you are silent, and those people are hanged unlawfully and unjustly on the Day of Judgment. The whole Ummah will stand on trial in front of Allah Azza wa Jal for not doing enough to stop that from happening. <laughs>
It's no longer plundering the wealth, accumulating wealth for yourself, becoming and building empires. No, it's all about the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. That focus from material gains, from world-centered lifestyle to lifestyle of the hereafter. That's what changed the course of humanity. I believe the same would happen to Bangladeshis if they were given the same education en masse. It's a tragedy that they haven't had the opportunity to learn much about Islam for the last 41 years they've been independent. It's a tragedy. I have been to the most remote villages of Bangladesh. I have traveled, now I can say, from south to the north and east to the west. And I have come back more saddened than ever before. We give more da'wah to the people of non-Muslims in this country than the Muslims in Bangladesh receive. Non-Muslims in this country may be more aware of Islam than many Muslims in Bangladesh today. That tragedy needs to be averted. That tragedy needs to be averted. It's not a poor country. They don't need your handouts. They need help and support so that they can be educated and free. Free to worship Allah, free to determine their own future rather than be bullied and emotionally blackmailed by secular fundamentalists and nationalists that we see in Bangladesh today. Your brothers and sisters, I want you to mark my words. I do not support any political parties in Bangladesh. I'm not interested in any of them. I think all of them are part and parcel of the problem, not part of the solution. I am Muslim in Britain. This is my home. My heart goes out when I see tragedy in Pakistan. My heart goes out when I see tragedy in Yemen. My heart goes out when I see tragedy in Sudan. My heart is bleeding because what I see in Bangladesh happening at the moment. And he should have said, as Rasul Sallallahu said, the Muslim Ummah is one body. If one party is ill, the rest of the body should feel the pain. You should feel the same. And you should do something about it. Silence isn't a strategy of a good Muslim. Silence and passivism is not a quality of a good Muslim. We need to do everything possible to save these nations, particularly Bangladesh, from abyss that I see it's marching in the direction of. Brothers and sisters, if you have got Bangladeshi friends in this country, talk to them. If you're Bangladeshi yourself, speak to your relatives and families back in the countries where they come from, where you come from. Encourage them to come back to Islam and not be divided based on nationalism and the secular fundamentalist that is sweeping <coughs> the country at the moment. Encourage them. You know what they do? They confuse Islam with Jamaat Islam. Anything Jamaat Islami does is Islamic. And if you do something Islamic, it must be Jamaat Islami too. That confusion comes because people don't have understanding of Islam adequately. Jamaat Islam is a political party. I'm not interested in them. I'm interested in Islam. I'm interested in Islam. And the greatest tragedy, my brothers and sisters, I left it to the last, is the scholars in Bangladesh are disunited like never before. Do you know why? In Bangladesh, this is the culture. If you have four children, four boys, amongst your boys, the one which has got the least IQ, the one which is slow in not learning, even with disabilities maybe, is sent to the Islamic madrasa to study in a residential boarding place far away from civilization. And the one who's got the highest IQ is given to private school, secular schools, so they would do the best that there is. Fantastic scholars have merged from those backgrounds. Believe you me, they have. But by far, majority of Bangladeshi scholars are a liability on Bangladesh itself. They earn their money by selling the Quran, by writing tabis, attending milad, and doing this, that, and the other, which has nothing to do with Islam. When I was in Bangladesh, I heard somebody reciting the Quran with a speaker over the whole night. And I asked somebody, what's going on? Oh, he's re reciting the Quran. He's doing a khatmal Quran. I said, okay, what does that mean? He's finishing the Quran. Why is he doing it overnight? Because the idea is to finish it in one night. Okay, oh, noble idea, isn't it? Finish the whole Quran in one night, fantastic. But there is something more sinister behind it. It's a business. 
the more you do, the more you earn. Those liable scholars, the liability scholars, they do most of this in Ramadan and they earn whole year's salary by reciting the Quran at a thousand miles, you know, net break speed. Not, nobody understands anything and they call it Khatm Quran. They don't understand what they're reciting. The listeners don't understand what has been recited and it's been thrown out using the loudspeakers. Using the Quran to give tabis is the most popular business in Bangladesh. They become a liability. And because scholars are disunited today, prominent scholars are being locked up. The rest of the scholars are silent. In fact, I call them boot clickers because they have been brought by the government. They have been bought by the government with money, fame and promise of power tomorrow. That's the biggest tragedy of all tragedies in Bangladesh. That those who have knowledge, in quote unquote, supposedly, have become so deeply divided. You see, there is a saying, when shaitan wants to target and destroy a nation, it targets the scholars first. Why? If they can break the scholar, corrupt the scholar, the followers will automatically be destroyed and corrupted. Brothers and sisters, this is a sample of what's happening in other parts of the Muslim world too. It's not just specific to Bangladesh, believe you me. I'm just giving you an example because I've just come back from it a week ago. I would like us to realize that our deen of Allah is very different. It's none of those. Rasulullah Sallallahu did not spend 23 years of his life for you and I to give tabis. You think he did that for tabis? You think he did that for you to do khatm al-Quran and not understand a single word of it? You think he did that for you to earn a living out of selling the Quran? <coughs> Waste of life! Insult to the life of Rasulullah those who even suggest that he did anything like that. So that needs change. So I want to finish by reminding you of the verse that I recited in the beginning. Allah does not change the fate of those people who do not change what is within them first. Our future will not change unless we change what is within ourselves first. Change must begin from within. Intellectual renaissance is needed en masse within the Muslim world. Learning and understanding the Quran is needed. We need to become a people of the Quran. Understand and read and have it in our life, in our hearts, manifesting in everything that we do. Our relationship with Allah must be deep and profound. Our interpersonal relationship with one another must be based on fairness and justice. If we don't change and become like that, we have no future. We we'll remain downtrodden, abused and obliterated by other nations. Brothers and sisters, finally, I would like to urge you all to unite together to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to free Bangladesh of this difficulty. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin. We have united together in asking you free Bangladesh from all the troubles, Ya Allah. Free Bangladesh from all the troubles, Ya Allah. Free the Bangladesh from the grips of the secular fundamentalists, Ya Allah. Free them, Ya Rabbi Ya Rahmanur Rahimin. Ya Akramul Akramin. Free the scholars who have been locked up, Ya Allah. Free the innocent who have been unjustly treated, Ya Allah. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin. Guide the people of Bangladesh, Ya Allah. Free Bangladesh again, Ya Allah. Free Bangladesh from the fitna, Ya Allah. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, free the whole world from the troubles and tribulations, Ya Rabb. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin, free every part of the world from troubles and tribulations, Ya Allah. Ya Akramul Akramin, Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, restore dignity and peace on this earth, Ya Allah. Restore peace and dignity on this earth, Ya Allah. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, make us the best of ambassadors, Ya Allah. Ya Akramul Akramin, Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, relieve us from the troubles and tribulations, Ya Allah. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin, help us so that we can help ourselves, Ya Allah. Strengthen us in our iman so that we can help ourselves, Ya Allah. Strengthen us in our taqwa so that we can help ourselves, Ya Allah. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, enable us so that we can practice your deen, Ya Allah. We can understand your deen, Ya Allah. We can tell other people about your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Rahmanur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin, give us the strength, give us the honor, give us the nur that you have promised, Ya Allah. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر البغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكرون يذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة